have no doubt that the team would have, we have assembled will work extremely hard to make all diasporans feel a part of the campaign. The diasporans, as uh, Dr. Kwesia Champong has said, the diaspora has been very, very key to the MPP and to our fortunes in every election. And I expect the diaspora to play a very critical role in the 2024 election. I am one of you. I am a diasporan myself, having lived over 20 years before coming back to Ghana. I know one of the concerns that has been expressed to me by various branches in the diaspora is that by the grace of God, when we win, when I make appointments, I should make sure the appointments are spread all over the branches of the party and not just limited to a few branches. So I'm, I'm very aware that it is a concern and I, I can assure you that there will be a campaign to make Ghanaians choose Dr. Mahamudu Baobi. It is possible. Why should Ghanaians choose Dr. Mahamudu Bahomi? Ladies and gentlemen, Ghana needs problem solvers. Ghana needs generational thinkers and people with innovative ideas. I am a problem solver and a generational the thinker. Man. The digital man with innovative ideas and I have a solid track record as a vice president to prove that if you ask me as a vice president with the support of the president what problems I've been able to solve what issues have I championed as vice president I'll tell you that when we came into office we did not have a unique national identification number. I championed the issuance of the Ghana card, and today 17.6 million Ghanaians have been issued with the Ghana card. Today, and just a couple of weeks ago, we have made it possible by the integration of the databases of the Ghana Health Service and the Births and Deaths Registry we have, and the National Identification Authority, we have now made it possible for children who are born at birth now, they will have Ghana card numbers. Wow. And next month, we are going to start the registration of all school children onto the Ghana card. This is a major legacy we are leaving for Ghana. And all of you in the diaspora understand more than anybody else in Ghana the importance of the Ghana card. Today, when we came into office, students had problems with getting student loans because they needed guarantees. The Ghana card has made it needless to have a guarantee. You can get a student loan just with your Ghana card. When we came into office, we had no ad national address system. So I led the you know, effort to bring about the Ghana digital property address system. <clears throat> Today, you cannot get lost in Ghana. You just ask for the digital address, and they will go, you will go to the place. Yeah. And this is helping e-commerce in Ghana. When we came into office, it was not possible to transfer mount. We are one of the few countries and sleep outside the NHI office to renew your mobile phone, to, to renew your health insurance. Today, you can buy electricity credit for your home. Here in South Africa, if your house in Ghana needs credit, you can buy that credit from...
South Africa and you will top up on your own. Today, we have, we have plugged the leakages at the ECG. When we came into office, ECG was earning revenue of around 450 million Ghana cities every month. We put in a team there to digitalize their revenue collection. Today, they are collecting at least 1.2 billion Ghana cities every month from 450 million. Today, we have seen that the bureaucracy that used to be there for the uh, application of passports has reduced. We are able to apply for passports online, and this has really increased the revenue of the passport office. The clearance of goods at the port has also been digitalized, and it has made the process very, very easy. The issue of fake insurance certificates for vehicles has now been dealt with. with. With the motor insurance database, you can just put in the car number into a USSD code after dialing a USSD code, and it will tell you whether the vehicle is insured or not. So you cannot have fake insurance in Ghana today. You will be caught. We have also digitalized the operations of the DVLA and the registration processes for vehicles and made it very, very simple. Something that we have also done, when you look at pharmacies in Ghana, we have now put all the pharmacies, so far as at yesterday, 1,762 pharmacies in Ghana on a common digital platform. We are going live for the national on April 2nd which will mean that if the doctor gives you a prescription, today you don't, I mean today you have to figure out which pharmacy has the medicine. You may go to three or four before finding out. You don't know how much it costs, but with the e-pharmacy platform now, um, from the 2nd of April, once the whole thing goes nationwide, when you upload your prescription, onto the platform, you'll be told which pharmacy near you has the medicine. And then you will know what the prices of the different medicines at the different pharmacies are. So if you want to order from a pharmacy, you give them your digital address, pay with your mobile money or other, and they will deliver it at home for you. Ghana is got the first Mighty K TV. E Subscribe on our YouTube channel. Click on the notification bell one. so you don't miss out on any video we post. Mighty K Online, Mighty K TV. It is possible. To all the senior high schools, about 700 of them in Ghana, free Wi Fi. And on Monday, the president is going to launch one student, one laptop for all the senior high schools in Ghana. Because there was a problem. We want to teach the kids code. Coding and other things. But if you don't have laptops, how do you teach them coding? How do you move to the next generation? These laptops, by the way, can work both offline and online. All the textbooks and reading materials are on the laptops, and they can be charged by solar, so that even in the villages, the students can do. And all 1.4 million senior high school students will each get a tablet. We have established the Ghana that Gov platform because if you are looking for a government service, you have so many places to go. 
But on one platform, Ghana.gov, we have onboarded 1,018 MMDAs. So you don't have to sit down and travel around, take transport to go to different places. You can go on the Ghana.gov platform, apply for the service you want, pay for it, and then get it at that point. So you will have a lot more. I think there's a less bureaucracy in the process of, of, of getting government services. We have also had, when we came into office, only 4% of the adult population of Ghana had a tax identification number. Only 4%. We decided to make the Ghana card the national uh, tax identification number. And when we made the Ghana card number the tax identification number, we increased the number of the proportion of the population with tax adult population with tax identification numbers from 4% to 85% today. We have also seen um, that birth certificates, fake birth certificates, are now getting out of the way because of the digitalization of the. Um, Birth and Deaths Registry. You've, you've seen that we have attacked, tackled corruption by looking at reducing ghost workers at the Controller and Accountant General Department. We have cleaned, because of the unique Ghana card, there are no more any ghost workers at the Controller and Accountant General Department. No ghost, ghost workers at SNIT, no ghost workers at National Service Scheme. We've reduced corruption at the ports, at DVLA, Passport Office, NHIA, the, the Ghana.gov platform. Through all of these, uh, we have reduced corruption. We've also introduced drones to deliver medicines in remote areas. The zip line drones are delivering medicines and blood and vaccines. In fact, when we had COVID, the drones were a life saver for Ghanaians and we have six drone centers and we are doing 100 flights a day from each center to deliver medicines across the country. And what is remarkable and I'm so proud that in the whole world Ghana is the largest medical drone delivery service in the world. The whole world. And it, the, the drone centers are 100% manned by Ghanaians. All the flight operators, everything is 100% manned by Ghanaians. And we are very proud of these young men and women who are doing this job. We have also networked so far 300 hospitals in Ghana. So all the teaching hospitals, all the district hospitals, all the regional hospitals, and many others have all been networked. So to all your medical records, if you go to those hospitals, are digitalized. And you don't, if they transfer you from Wa or Bolga or Tamale to Kumasi or Accra or Cape Coast, you don't need to take your folder. Just take your ID number and they'll put it in there and your medical records will show. And we have therefore done so far, 600, 300, and this year we'll do another 600 hospitals, and next year we'll complete the entire hospitals, clinics, polyclinics, everything. All medical records will be digitalized, and we will take this forward. We also did not have a vehicle for Zongo development, so we established the Zongo Development Fund. Sickle cell sufferers had problems getting um, access to a very important drug called hydroxyurea because it's very expensive. And we placed it on the National Health Insurance Scheme that is allowing sickle cell sufferers to get hydroxyurea for free. We, I also led the gold for oil program and the gold purchase program by the Bank of Ghana and we, we have really supported our reserves and our currency. Another thing I did for all of you who travel into Ghana, you know that today when you arrive into Ghana, you don't have any arrival forms. The support 
Dr. Baumia and the MPP is that I have a mindset of possibilities. I always aim high. I'm always trying to do things that have not been done before. And many people think they are impossible. When I'll say that I'm going to do these seemingly impossible things, those who think in terms of impossibilities are always skeptical. For example, when I talked about bringing drones, they said I was going to bring drones to take pictures of people, women in their bathrooms. When I said that with the Ghana card, you can travel from abroad into Ghana from 44,000 airports in the world, they didn't believe me. But today, that is the case. When I talked about mobile money interoperability, making sure everybody in Ghana has a bank account, they didn't believe it. But today, that is the case. They were skeptical about the digital address system, free Wi-Fi, hostels for Kayaye, and all of that. But we have delivered them. These are people who did not believe in the free senior high school. They said it was 419, isn't it? Today, John Mahama is saying he's going to add private schools to senior high schools. If we hadn't done it, where would you have even gotten the idea to say you are going to add private schools? In 2022, today we've just, we are f completing the hosting of the Africa Games today, isn't it? It has been a very successful Games. In 2022, John Mahama said we should abandon it. We should not do it. Isn't it? His mindset was one of impossibilities. But we said it is possible. possible. It is possible. It is possible. It is possible, indeed. And we persevered. And we built the Boteman Stadium. We built the University of Ghana Sports Stadium. And we have hosted a very successful Africa Games today. He thought teacher training allowances, he canceled them. Nursing training allowances, he canceled them. We came back and we have reinstated them and we have restored them. But we have made these impossible things possible. In Ghana, ladies and gentlemen, we need a leader who is committed to the fight against corruption. I have a solid track record in fighting corruption, even as vice president. We have eliminated ghost workers, which were costing us a lot, and this is corruption. In controller and accountant, General Snit, and NS, the National Service, we've Reduce corruption at the ports, at the DVLA, at the passport office, at the NHIA, at the ECG, motor insurance, and so on. So I have a track record. I can tell you if you ask me how I have helped to reduce corruption. But can John Mahama tell you how he reduced corruption? Can he give you one policy? that he implemented to reduce corruption. He cannot. Ladies and gentlemen, I am a hard worker. I am not lazy. I will work hard for Ghanaians as a president. I am a compassionate leader. I care about the poor, the vulnerable, the persons with disabilities, the lepers, and the people with special needs. Available data, my brothers and sisters, fellow patriots, available data also shows that notwithstanding the challenging economy we inherited and the global economic crisis that ensued from COVID-19 during the Russia-Ukraine war, available data shows that our overall performance in areas like jobs, we've created 2.1 million jobs, the highest of any government 
Mighty K TV. Subscribe on our YouTube channel. Click on the notification bell so you don't miss out on any video we post. Mighty K Online. Mighty K TV. It is possible. Public libraries like fish landing sites, like railways, all manner of infrastructure, all available data shows that education, healthcare. And all of these, that our performance as an MPP government in all of these areas, our performance is superior to that of John Mahama's government and the NDC government. But notwithstanding, ladies and gentlemen, and very, very soon, um, as the president said in the State of the Nation address, very soon we are going to be outdooring our performance with the performance tracker. We have finished the work on the performance tracker, and in the next week or two, the performance tracker will be adored, and you will see all that government has done, every sector, every district, in, and you can point to solar tuna caliber, you can point to... Uh, Bantama, however, and you see all the, what the government has done. And we are going to be outdooring this. And all of this shows that our performance across almost every sector, across our performance is superior to that of the performance of the John Mahama government when they were in office. But, yes, this is not Green Book. Mighty K TV. Subscribe on our YouTube but channel. Click on the notification bell so you don't miss out on any video we post. Mighty K Online. Mighty K TV. It is possible. People that his performance was better than ours. Just think about this. You take an exam with somebody. You score 30%, and the person scores 70%. And you, the one who scored 30%, you are going around to tell people that your performance is better than the one who scored 70%. What will way be done? This is what I call a confirmed mathematics. A confirmed mathematics. A confirmed mathematics. Confirm mathematics. Ladies and gentlemen, another reason. Why? And now, ladies and gentlemen, the President of our Republic, Nana Adodankwa Akufuado. Mighty K TV. Subscribe on our YouTube channel. Click on the notification bell so you don't miss out on any video we post. Mighty K Online. Mighty K TV. It is possible. And make our nation great and strong. Both to defend forever. The cause of freedom and of right Fill the hearts with true humility Make us cherish fearless honesty And help us to resist the pressure Through with all our will and might forevermore and help us to resist 
sister press a shoe with all I will and might forevermore. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you today in humility and in faith. We thank you for all you have given us as a nation and the many blessings in our land. Thank you for your great love and blessing over our lives. Thank you that your favor has no end, but it lasts for our entire lifetime. Father, we declare, we ask for your guidance as a nation so that we might walk fully in your blessing and goodness today. We ask that your face will shine on us. May the purpose of our gathering here today, led by the President of the land, His Excellency Nana Adodankwa Akufuadu, be a blessing to our nation and to our world. Let the purpose of our gathering today be a pace setter, a bedrock of continuous growth in the lives of our children and our nation and Africa and the world. You are God with an agenda. You always have divine agenda. We love you for that, Father, that even when we have done what we have asked, the results are so much greater than we ever could have imagined. Even in failed attempts, you blow us away with your faithfulness to provide what we need. So we ask for your guidance and strength today. Show us the way and fill us with your courage and wisdom. Our prayer today is that you will be done through this event. Take what we have prepared and multiply our efforts as only you can. Stir our intentions to align with your righteous will. Remind us of your faithful provision when our efforts fail us or fall short. May all glory go up to you when we reach the finish line and climb over our benchmarks. Bless this launch event with the spirit of responsible technology development and the vision to harness its benefits for the betterment of our nation, Ghana, and humanity. God bless our homeland, Ghana. In Jesus' name, amen. Please be seated. Many thanks to you, Miss Ashley Chooks, a third year student of the Wesley Grammar School for the anthem. And many thanks to you, the Reverend Andy Simpson, Senior Pastor of the Havila Praise Chapel of the Havila Mission. It was the illustrious son of our motherland, the celebrated Dr. James Quidry Agri, who declared in his lecture in Canada, and I quote, Only the best is good enough for Africa. 100 years on, we meet here inspired by these words to give to ourselves through our children and posterity the best in this new era of learning. One beyond boundaries because every child deserves a digital education. My name is Jerry Ajololo and on behalf of the government of Ghana, acting through the Ministry of Education, and the Ghana Education Service, I'd like to say good morning to you all, our fathers, our mothers, my brothers, my sisters, sons and daughters, friends and well-wishers of our beloved motherland Ghana. And welcome to this great day in history happening right here at the Accra International Conference Center on TV, on radio, and online. We welcome you to the launch of the Ghana Smart Schools Project, an extension of the Government of Ghana's free SHS and TVET digitalization agenda to transform Ghana's economy by equipping Ghanaian students with 21st century learning opportunities for them to compete globally. If this is not worthy of a round of applause, I don't know what else is. If I'm glad, I'm glad for one man in whose lifetime He's made a promise, and that promise has been fulfilled in time and on record. Ladies and gentlemen, make welcome the promise keeper, Nana Adodankwa Akufuado, President of our Republic. Mr. President, there are no words. 
simply gratitude. He's come this far because of the support, overwhelming support from the Vice President of our Republic. Make welcome His Excellency, Dr. Mohamed Baumia. The arrowhead spearheading the reform of Ghana's education, Ghana's Minister for Education, the Honorable Dr. Yao Osayedu Chum, MP. We make welcome in a show of ministerial solidarity the Minister for Chieftaincy and Religious Affairs, the Honorable Stephen Asamwa Boating. Help me receive the Deputy Ministers of Education, the Honorable John and Tim Fojo, MP, and the Honorable Professor Kingsley Nyakun. We make welcome, ladies and gentlemen, the Minister Designate for Information, the Honorable Fatima Tu Abu Bakar. We make welcome the Minister Designate for Local Government and Rural Development, the Honorable Martin Eje Kosa. Thank you. The Deputy Minister Designate for Communications and Digitalization, the Honorable Charles Echampong, MP. We're joined by His Royal Majesty, the Manfihini and Chidomhini of Akwapim, Nana and Sasasraku III. Nana Yamawakwaba. In the same vein, we're joined by the president of the Osu Stu Council, Noche, Professor Ni Noche Owo. My K TV. Subscribe on our YouTube channel. Click we'll on the notification the bell the so you Imam, don't miss out on any video Sheikh we post. My K Online, My K TV. The chairs it and members of the possible. parliamentary select committees on education, communication, and digitalization also join us. Please, a resounding round of applause for them. It will be remiss of me not to acknowledge directors of ministries, departments, and agencies, heads, teachers, and students of selected senior high schools and TVET institutions, distinguished guests, members of the press, ladies and gentlemen. We say a warm welcome to you. Let today be a legacy for ourselves and for posterity as we share in the joy of our children as they receive world-class education. Welcoming us warmly, it's my pleasure to invite the Director General of the Ghana Education Service. Make welcome Dr. Eric Nkansa. Thank you very much. The President of the Republic, His Excellency Nana Dudankwa Kufuadu, Vice President of the Republic, Mighty K and the flag bearer of the new Subscribe on our YouTube Excellency, channel, click on the Dr. notification Mahalo bell Dr. so you don't miss the out Minister for on any video we post. Dr. Mighty K Online, Mighty K TV, Minister it is of Information Honorable Fatima Abu Bakari. The Minister for uh, Chieftaincy and Religious Affairs, Honorable Asamoah Bwate. The Deputy Minister for Communications and Digitalization, Designate. The Members of Parliament and Ministers here in present. The Deputy Minister for Education, Honorable Intim Fogio, in charge of General Education. And Deputy Minister for Education, Designate. TVET, Honorable Professor Kingsley Nyako. The Chief Director of the Ministry of Education, Mrs. Mamli Andrews. The Rep of the Head of Civil Service. The Head of Local Government Service, Dana Atwater. Heads of Agencies under the Ministry of Education. The Deputy Director General in charge of Quality and Access and Management Service of Ghana Education Service, members of the diplomatic community, our development partners, heads of second cycle institutions, teachers and students, distinguished invited guests, the leadership of our teacher unions here in present, ladies and gentlemen, all other protocols duly observed. Good morning. It is with great pleasure 
and a deep sense of pride that I, on behalf of the Honorable Minister for Education, Honorable Dr. Yawase Edichum, welcome you all to this historic event as we gather to witness the launch of the Ghana Smart Schools Project by our visionary president, His Excellency Nana Dodankwa Ekufuado. Your Excellencies, Honorable Ministers, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, you are warmly welcome. The theme for the project, Education Without Boundaries, is visionary and aligns with our mandate at the Ghana Education Service to ensure that we deliver quality, inclusive, and relevant education for the benefit of all Ghanaian children of school-going age without discrimination. Towards the realization of this mandate, the service has been implementing programs and policies formulated by the Ministry of Education to ensure that learning outcomes are improved, teaching skills are enhanced, and education is made more impactful and relevant for the benefit of all. Since 2017, the Nanadu Akufuado government has implemented cutting-edge reforms and policies aimed at improving educational standards and equipping our learners with 21st century skills required to participate fully in this fourth industrial revolution. These include the implementation of the free senior high school program and the operationalization of our STEM schools, ably championed by our hardworking Minister for Education, Honorable Dr. Yao Osei Edichu. This morning, we have gathered here to witness the rollout of the many innovative interventions in our education sectors. One of them, the Smart Schools Project. This is a program designed to revolutionize our classrooms in our senior high schools with innovative technology to make teaching and learning much easier. The introduction of the One Student, One Tablet program represent a visionary step towards bridging the digital divide and ensuring that every student in Ghana has access to the transformative power of technology. By placing a tablet in the hands of each student, we are not only providing them with the window to a world of knowledge, but also equipping them with the skills necessary to succeed in an increasingly digitalized world. As the Director General of Ghana Education Service, I am honored and humbled to witness the realization of this initiative, which embodies our collective dedication to nurturing the next generation of leaders, innovators, and change makers. The impact of this program will extend far beyond the confines of our classrooms, shaping the future of our nation and empowering our youth to reach new height of academic excellence. On behalf of the Ghana Education Service, I extend my heartfelt gratitude to the President of the Republic, His Excellency Nana Dodankwa Ekufuado, for his unwavering commitment to education and to all our partners and stakeholders who have contributed to making this initiative a reality. Together, we embark on a journey that will redefine the educational landscape of Ghana and pave the way for a brighter, more inclusive future for all. On this note, I wish to once again, on behalf of the Honorable Minister for Education, welcome all of you warmly to this event. May today's launch inspire us to continue striving towards excellence in education for the benefit of all our learners and our nation. I thank you for your attention.
Mighty K TV. Subscribe on our YouTube channel. Click on the notification bell so you don't miss out on any video we post. Mighty K Online. Mighty K TV. It is possible. This is how the good people of Ghana, represented by the Noyam Dance Institute, show their love and appreciation for this bold initiative by the government of Ghana. Please, a round of applause once more. We say many thanks to you, the Director General of the Ghana Education Service, Dr. Eric Nkanza, for that warm note of welcome, calling us to excellence amongst many others. This morning, Mr. President, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to give to you the future of Ghana's education. I'm talking about the 500 strong students gathered in this room. Would you please rise and let's celebrate you. And there they are. For you we labor, for you we toil. And do this at great cost for your future. Please be seated. It is my pleasure to also acknowledge a big C joining us online of students from the various regions, from the eastern region, make welcome Avery Girls Senior High School. We make welcome from the Greater Accra region, Laboni Senior High School. We make welcome from the central region, Ghana National College. Let's make welcome from the Volta region, Maoli School. Let's receive from the Savannah region, Bole Senior High School. From Ashanti region, Prempe College. From the Upper West region, Watt Senior High School. And from the Ahafo region, Ola Girls Senior High School. And this is the first installment of students joining us online. I shall be acknowledging another set shortly. In moving on, Mr. President, Mr. Vice President, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, we would like to have an understanding of what has gone into the working mechanisms of this great project. For the next few minutes, please lend your attention to the screen for a production and experiential documentary. On knowledge and imparting it to students. Over time, students gained access to textbooks and libraries to expand their learning beyond the classroom. But this often meant struggling with the burden of carrying heavy stacks of books. A few years ago, Ghana introduced laptops in schools for teachers to enhance their learning processes. With a generation that is increasingly tech savvy, it is crucial to once again modernize and transform the current education system. Mighty K TV. Among these Subscribe on our YouTube channel. Click on the notification ways. bell so you don't miss out Ghana, on any video we post. Mighty K Online. Mighty K uh, TV. It is possible. Have seen transformation uh, the nation has never seen before. Whether it's education infrastructure, whether it's reform of the curriculum. Uh, teacher training in every aspect or sphere of education, there has been some great changes. The current style of learning is centered on the traditional mode of teaching, where the student is expected to copy notes and study everything theoretically. In this case, we don't get to leave what we learn. The traditional style of teaching limits me very much in the sense that most of the times teachers come to class to dictate notes. You might not hear what the teacher is saying, or the teacher might be speaking too fast or too slow, leading to potholes in your notes. I might decide to go to my fellow classmates for her notes, but she might have left potholes or might have spelled a word wrongly, or I might have even misheard the teacher. And this totally changes the meaning of the notes. We average study five subjects a day, and the number of books, considering the textbooks, exercise books, and notebooks, Maximum of 10. Maximum of 10. 
when I carry those heavy textbooks to class, usually my back aches a lot. When I'm in the classroom, I get tired because of the movement of the books back and forth. And it's, sometimes I get sleepy in class, which really affects the whole learning process. This current style of teaching and learning creates lazy students, I might say. Because since it's based on theory, there's no practicals, students don't get their zeal to go further into research or research more about what they are taught. They only wait for the teacher, consume what the teacher gives them, and then when it's time for examination, they go and then pour it out. In my line of duty, actually, handling abstract lessons is, is a bit of a challenge. See, there are lessons that in school you know that you like the subject, but this particular lesson I don't get to understand. So you would have to change your lesson methods and then you maneuver through the period, you ask questions and they are like, oh, they are getting it at the till end. You ask them, they say, Madam, I don't understand. What don't you understand? Then they are like the whole show. <laughs> it's, it's, it's really challenging. Sometimes the time is not enough because a period is one hour, two periods at most. It has to be two periods, which is two hours a day. So sometimes I have to vary my teaching techniques. So instead of using the role play, for instance, or a stage performance where they have to act, maybe as we are reading a drama test, I have to vary it and use question and answers, discussion, or the brainstorming method. Students have different abilities, and they have different needs. So as a teacher, whatever lessons are you plan, you should plan in such a way that you don't leave any student out. So the difficulty is how you plan your lessons such that you make provision for all different abilities, all the different ability students in your class. You are supposed to teach for students to understand. Now in teaching methods, you are supposed to use multiple you know, options for them to understand practically. And considering how students understand concepts, you need to you know, sub-break these ideas for them to understand. And you need a lot of things to help them understand these concepts. In recent years, several countries have embraced the use of tablets in their educational system, leading to remarkable advancements in learning outcomes. From South Korea to Finland, these nations have set a global benchmark for integrating technology into education. This initiative has not only improved access to information, but has also enhanced the overall learning experience. What we are about to do, about to learn, is the beginning of something so profound for our nation. Imagine entering into a school where everybody has access to computer and therefore can learn the various software tools, uh, the various application tools, and begin to create apps that can be used to solve a number of problems that confront our nation. There's a new dawn. A great thing is about to happen to our nation. The transformation is near and it's here and I'm excited about it. We looked at who the intended users are and in this case students at a senior high level, both Tibet and Ghana Education Service. This tablet is for learning purpose and so that also influenced the specifications for the tablet. When you look at the project I always say that the focus is not on the device, because if it's just a device, we can get on the market. But this tablet comes with a teaching and learning management system, and that is the unique aspect of the project. On this platform, students have access to all the approved textbooks. What this does is it helps us bridge the textbook to student ratio. We have videos on every subject or topic uploaded on the platform. They also have EPUB versions that they can use. The other interesting aspect of the platform is also um, the past questions from WAYEC. And we have a memorandum of understanding with WAYEC to upload past questions on the platform. Now, the beautiful aspect of the platform is its AI to be able to give prior questions to students. So for instance, instead of just going there to memorize and solve maybe one year um, past questions, maybe 2019, you can pick, the system can pick at random and give to you to be able to try your hands on. With the inception of one tablet for one student policy, 
I believe it is a very laudable idea where students are going to do away with loads of books and they will not have to buy a lot of textbooks because I believe everything will be embedded in the tablet. And once they have the tablets with them, they are good to go. Teachers and students certainly would work with these tablets to ensure that there's absolute good teaching and learning. First and foremost, teachers will be able to use the tablets even when students are not in school, school session. When students are home, they too will be able to use the tablets. They can use the tablets for research. It's going to make it very easy for teachers to teach. Even if the students are not even carrying them home, they can still, during contact hours, it's easier to use these tablets for communication. The tablets will be used, one, to facilitate um, learning, uh, both teachers and students, and also among the students themselves. And it will also create um, learner-centered um, knowledge construction. Getting the SM1 tablet, once they have the notes on it, they have videos on it, they, can, they have lectures on it that they can study on their own time. It will help to boost them. I think the tablet is bringing in all, is going to help them to really apply their critical thinking to be able to venture into creativity and innovation. Surely it will make teaching and learning very easy in terms of note taking and then the students to getting records. They will, get, they will have an updated record. What we are looking at for is having all the trade areas, both the male-dominated uh, trades and female-dominated trades, all the practicals will be put in there and it will make teaching and learning very, very easy. Apart from the learning management system, which is even loaded onto it, we also know that the, the students could have access to live broadcast, live lectures, or live tuition from one of the best and brightest minds across the country, which could be seen and um, it could be followed, right, by all students, no matter where you find yourself across the country. The tablets will make learning more efficient because it brings about time saving. Student does not need to waste time carrying books to class. With the help of this tablet, we students will be able to learn on our own pace and then make research on topics we are being taught in class. Technology is invading the field of education at an ever increasing rate. It has made teaching and learning very interesting and interactive through the introduction of intuitive touch stream, just like the SM1 tablet that you are introducing to us. Due to how these tablets are programmed, we wouldn't be bothering ourselves carrying books, enough uh, plenty books to and from school each and every time, which will help better our health condition. Yeah, I could install apps that could give me enough information on the subject and broaden my understanding of the subject. Even when there, the notes are a lot on the tablet, they can easily highlight the points, learn it in briefs, and when they have enough time, they come back and learn the whole thing. With the introduction of the SM1 tablet as the new technology engaging, um, student one uh, participate in class, that is engaging. Re, uh, that is, teacher pose a question and a student has the right or uh, the opportunity to answer those questions using the SM1 tablet. The SM1 tablet will go a long way to support students to uh, develop the critical thinking problem solving and creative skills that will help to develop them both academically and then personally. There are students who are underserved, especially those in the remote areas. Online, yes. Mighty K TV, it is possible. They go out to the world of you know, jobs and they are not that confident. But with this, I guess it's going to increase that confidence level. With this new um, um, curriculum core competences, I know we talk of digital literacy. So it is going to make our learners digitally literate. And aside that, they will be able to learn on their own. Our nation's fortunes will tremendously improve with digitalization. 
we haven't seen anything yet. This is what all of us have been waiting for. And finally, the future is here today. The fourth industrial revolution, the fusion of the biological and electrical, which we are experiencing now, will not elude this nation with digitalization. This is the future and this is the present. And I'm excited about it. I think that Ghana's education with the introduction of the SM1 tablet, the future, is a bright future. Remember that Ghana is doing something that no other African country that I'm aware of. So I expect that the future of education is going to be bright. We're going to have better quality education, more accessible education, more inclusive education. And the performance of the students we expect to be even better and better as we go forward. The Ghana Smart Schools project is part of a deliberate effort to address the digitalization agenda of my government to transform Ghana's economy. The project seeks to equip Ghanaian students with 21st century learning opportunities to be able to compete globally. Under this project, all public senior high school and TVET students will be supplied with tablets fully loaded with a customized learning management system. The system is available both online and offline with approved content. Technology will never replace teachers, but technology in the hands of great teachers is transformational. And so if you're joining us, if you're joining us on radio, on television, or online on the Facebook platform of Student Mate, we welcome you to the future of education as we launch the Ghana Smart Schools Project, a proud initiative of the Government of Ghana, which is an extension of the Government of Ghana's free SHS and TVET digitalization agenda to transform Ghana's economy Mighty by Ghanaian students. Subscribe on our YouTube channel, click on the notification bell so you don't miss out on any video we post. Mighty K learning. Online, Mighty K TV, it is possible. And all this has been made possible because of the team that have worked tirelessly to make this a reality. Allow me to acknowledge all the directors. Would you please rise and let's celebrate you. <laughs> Leading the team, our chief director, our first female chief director, Madame Mamley Andrews. Please, a round of applause for them all. Thank you very much. Particularly grateful for this bold initiative, our students joining us across the country, I'd like to acknowledge the second batch from the Bono region. Let's make welcome Sunyane Senior High School. Let's welcome also from the Bono East region, Techiman Senior High School. From the Northeast region, Wale Wale Senior High School. Wale Wale, the Vice President cannot see you. Ladies and gentlemen, a round of applause for Wale Wale. Let's go to the Northern region and we go to Bisco, Business High School. <laughs> to the OT region and we make welcome KJB Asato High School. <laughs> Let's receive from the Upper East region, Navrongo Senior High School. From the Western Region, Sakra de Senior High School. And finally, from the Western North Region, Queens Girls Senior High School. Together, let's hear it up for them a resounding round of applause. 
Once to every man and nation comes a moment to decide. For him, it was about leaving a legacy. And at the call of the President of our Republic, he abandoned all to contribute his quota to the transformation of Ghana's education. Please welcome the Minister for Education, the Honorable Dr. Yao Osei Edutum, MP. Mighty K TV. Subscribe on our YouTube channel. Click on the notification bell so you don't miss out on any video we post. Mighty K Online. Mighty K TV. It is possible. The New Patriotic Party. Ministers of State here in Gadet. Uh, my colleague minister from Chief Science and Religious Affairs. Minister designate for Ministry of Information, Minister designate for local government and all other ministers, Deputy Minister of Education, Honorable Ntim Fodjo, and the Deputy Minister designate for Education, uh, Professor uh, Kinsley. Heads of other agencies under the Ministry of Education, the Chief Director, Nanama uh, Osu Manche. Nana Manfihne, our development partners, head of local government and civil service, teacher unions are present, our students and our friends from the media, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I'm excited to be here today. Uh, it's rare to have the president and the vice president at your ministry's event. <laughs> and today, History has been made. I see my boss the president, I see my boss the vice president. And that makes you humble when you are speaking. So Mr. President, with your permission, I'll continue with my address. You know, most of you know that I like the S temple, but not when you're president and vice president. Because you can't miss anything that you have prepared. So I'll stick to the script. But permit me to say, Ghana, is in the fourth industrial revolution. And we want to lead. You know, in the first industrial revolution of the steam engine, Africa was not part of it. The second industrial revolution came, electricity, where are the fringes? The third industrial revolution of the computer, we use them, but they're not building. Now we are in the fourth industrial revolution. Time of the artificial intelligence, robotics, time when we can combine biological and the physical, the electrical, bring about innovation that the world has never seen. The time of you too, where you can go in and see what the people have done and do yours. This is the moment of Africa. And this is Ghana's moment. And I'm super excited that we get to embark on this after proving ourselves to secondary education from a little over 800,000. And now in one year, we have 504,000 students enrolled in our senior high schools first year. From a little over 800,000, today we have 1.4 million students enrolled in our secondary schools. And you know, for any government, that could have an achievement in itself. I've increased enrollment from 800,000 to 1.4 million. Just clap for me. But that is not. I didn't say clap for me. I, have, I said, for any government, they will have told you to clap for them. But another Dan Kwaku Fuadu, the visionary president, was not satisfied. He taxed us with the responsibility to improve the quality of education. So I always say, our party is the party of Manifesto Plus. We do things that we did not promise in our manifesto. <laughs> not a week passes by without the ministry receiving a delegation of chiefs asking for a STEM school. The STEM agenda is moving and it's moving fast. But I also know digitalization and 
what the vice president has championed with the permission of the president. Mighty Kate, we look at subscribe to my YouTube channel, click on the notification bell so you don't miss out on any video. And I can't even count because every day you turn around and he's touching something. Mighty K TV, it I call him is the possible. techno politician. The technocrat politician who is digitalizing everything under the visionary president of our time. Things are getting exciting. Many of us are familiar with a quote from the celebrated American civil rights leader Malcolm X who said education, and I quote, education is the passport to the future. For tomorrow belongs to those who prepare for it. Unquote. I'm also tempted to quote another American, Benjamin Franklin, who said, and I quote, an investment in knowledge pays the best interest. Unquote. After improving access to secondary education, we are now enhancing the quality so that we create a pipeline of the next generation of Ghanaians from our kindergarten, through primary schools, through our junior high schools, to our senior high schools. And when I talk about Manifesto Plus, we did not promise in our manifesto that we're going to transform kindergartens and transform primary schools and make them centers of excellence. But it's happening under the leadership of the president. But today we are here to talk about digitalization in our high schools. See, since assuming power in 2017, this government prioritized education and proceeded to demonstrate this commitment. When it was said free senior high school was impossible, the government went ahead to prove otherwise. And today, some 5.7 million children who are our own children, brothers and sisters, have benefited from the program. We have produced some impressive outcomes and results from the West Africa Senior High School Certificate Examination. And recently I heard somebody saying that uh, Ghana is no longer part of WASI, but we still top WASI. Last year, last year, two out of three high-performing WASI students in West Africa were from Ghana. And the two, and the two came from a very unique school in Bono, St. James High School and Seminary. This year, the three topmost students in West Africa all came from Ghana. And once again, two of them came from St. James. and one from our own Laboni Senior High School. This is the legacy of Nana Adodankwa Ekufuado led government. But that is not all. Across the country, we have enhanced the state of infrastructure on various campuses and provided more textbooks and other teaching and learning materials. We have taken steps to enrich the curriculum as we chart a new pathway to future high school education. We have provided computers to schools and Mighty provided K school Wi-Fi to prepare Subscribe to on our YouTube channel, click we have on the notification bell so their you don't miss out on any video we post. We have Mighty also boosted K the reward online. system with an enhanced best teacher award scheme. Possible. This government will continue to ensure the education sector continue to receive to receive as part of the government's investment. Mr. Chairman, Your Excellency, ladies and gentlemen, time is taken so far for Ghana and the rest of the world to achieve the target set in the sustainable development goals. And for us in the education arena, we have only the next six years to ensure inclusive and equitable quality education and produce lifelong learning opportunities for all. And I'm happy to report that we are on course in achieving this target, achieving inclusive and quality 
education for all reaffirms the belief that education is one of the most powerful and proven vehicles for socioeconomic transformation. We will witness within the next few weeks and months the conversion on some of, um, some of our existing buildings in our high schools into a smart learning environment. Construction is about to begin in earnest the development of new smart schools across the country. There will be an establishment of aftercare centers in campuses to attend to a computer that may need repair. We are setting up a 24-hour call center to resolve all consumer issues, including complaints from our students who are going to use these devices. The future of our education system is what we are witnessing today, and live participation from our schools across the country. The first of its kind at this Mighty K TV. The Subscribe on our YouTube channel. We Click on the notification on bell so you don't miss out on Ghana. any video the we post. Of Mighty K Online. Mighty K TV. It is possible. We are on a trajectory to a great future. And I can assure you, under and under Dan Kukufuano, a foundation has been laid. We are building on it. The future is here today. Ghana will be a great participant in the fourth industrial revolution. <clears throat> we will win. And the winning begins from today. Education changes the fortunes of countries. No country has transformed itself without improving its education system. We have begun something that 10 years, 20 years from now, the world will talk about. The world will come and see Ghana, see the innovation that brought about the transformation. Historians, Mr. President, will be kind to you. You have done the impossible in the COVID era. I did an interview with a reporter. Talk about all the things that we have done. The new junior high schools we are building. The community schools we are building. The, all the innovations that we've done. Including ensuring that teacher education is four years instead of three. Which means it's costing the country more. And the reporter looked at me and said, so you are doing all this in the midst of economic challenges, and I said, that is what a visionary president does. He had to find an antidote to the economic challenges by laying a strong and robust foundation for the economy, that this economy will stand the test of time. This is the foundation that we build upon in the years to come. Mr. President, Your Excellency, Mr. Vice President, I'm so grateful for this opportunity of being Ghana's Minister for Education at this time in our history. I'm grateful. Thank you all, and God bless you. And posterity will be kind to his legacy, Ghana's Minister for Education, the Honorable Yao Educhum, MP. Thank you, sir. Mighty K TV. Subscribe on our YouTube channel. Click on the notification bell In so on, you Mr. don't President, miss out on Vice any video President, we post. Mighty K Online. Mighty K TV. It is possible. The future of Ghana's education. For the next few minutes, please lend your unbiased attention to the screen.
what did we just see i'll tell you what you didn't see because what you really must see is outside there this was just a sneak peek of what we intend to do by way of smart classrooms which you shall behold in its full glory outside when the president of the republic together with the vice president officially outdoor it to us is that a good deal mighty k this morning it's my pleasure subscribe on our youtube channel Edmund click Kweku on the notification bell so you Popular, don't miss out Marcus on any Anno, video we post mighty k online mighty k tv it is possible for a presentation a round of applause for them This nation, your nation, my nation, our nation Ghana's educational journey has come a long way. From the shackles of colonial rule, where schools were a privilege, not a right, reserved only for the children of the elite, while the masses stumbled in ignorance. To then when the flames of independence were lit and with it a burning desire to learn and to break the things of ignorance that had bound us for far too long. Then public schools sprouted across the land, opening the doors of knowledge bit by bit. Yet the path was still lined with hurdles. Crumbling infrastructure, lacking resources, overcrowded classrooms, ill-equipped libraries. Policies emerged to bridge the gap. Expanding facilities, training more teachers, but financial barriers remain the challenge, excluding their intelligent minds trapped in poverty's grip. Until the day a revolution dawned, the free SHS policy, a dream realized, dismantling the financial hurdles, making education a right, not just a privilege. For the first time, I, Edmond Kweku Asumi, could dream. For the first time, I, Abdulaziz Khadija, could finally dream. For the first time, we, the students of Ghana, could dream. For the very first time, as far for heights our parents could not fathom, to become engineers, professors, doctors, to become fashion designers, teachers, innovators. Uplifting ourselves, our families, and our nation. Yet, even as we bask in this monumental stride, the world continues to accelerate ahead, leaving us grasping for a new digital future where knowledge is boundless, accessible, and engaging. So today, I ask you, you, and you, to dream with us. What if every student's journey was transformed? If the tools to conquer this digital age were quite literally at our fingertips. Imagine. <laughs> what if? What if? What if tablets became our portable libraries, loaded with a universe worth of knowledge, constantly updated, nurturing curious minds to explore, question, and innovate with our limits? What if? What if? What if classrooms transcended the four walls? reaching across towns, cities, and nations to learn from the experts, no matter the distance, erasing boundaries, uniting our people. What if, what if we had unlimited access to exam practice tools, for past questions to learning tools, and many, many more? No student, and I mean no student, not even a single student would be left behind. We will be armed with all the tools we need to strive and excel without failure. What if all this wasn't just another what if? Yes, but the launch of a bold new reality for the students of Ghana to finally solve on shackling our minds to reach limitless heights. What if the President of the Republic of Ghana, His Excellency Nana Adodankwa Ekufuado, Called mount the stage to offer us yet another innovative solution to make this what if a reality. What if? What if, what if, what if, what if, if Mr. President, 
you could kindly mount the stage to outdoor and unveil the new era of education. Mighty K, Mighty K. Subscribe on our YouTube Subscribe channel. Subscribe on our YouTube Click channel. On the notification Click bell. On the notification so you don't bell. miss so out. So you don't any miss video out. We post. Any video. Mighty we post. K online. Mighty K online. Mighty K online. TV. Mighty K TV. Possible. It is possible. Eminent clergy, Christian and Muslim, the Vice President, the MPP presidential candidate for the 2024 election, Minister for Education and Member of Parliament for Bosumche, the Minister for Chieftaincy and Religious Affairs, Deputy Minister for Education and Member of Parliament for Asin South. Ministers and Deputy Ministers designate Members of Parliament. Director General of the Ghana Education Service. The Head of the Local Government Service. President of the Conference of Heads of Assisted Secondary Schools, CHAS. Leadership of Teacher Unions. Esteemed Traditional Rulers from Mamfi, Equiapim and Osu members of the diplomatic corps, students, fellow Ghanaians, ladies and gentlemen. On 27th February 2024, whilst delivering the message on the state of the nation to parliament, I intimated that government had began the rollout of the one tablet per student policy at all senior high schools. It is intended to be a great tool to help bridge the gap between disadvantaged and privileged students. Today, I have the singular honor of launching officially yet another intervention to, to add further impetus to what I've already described as a transformative policy that has broken myths and liberated minds, the free senior high school program. Ladies and gentlemen, education is not merely a right, a privilege. We now know that it is a fundamental right whose enforcement empowers individuals, transforms societies, and propels nations towards progress and development. As we gather here today, let us reflect on the crucial role that education plays in shaping the destiny of our nation. Indeed, education is at the center of poverty eradication. It therefore explains why, against all odds, I went ahead to propose and subsequently implemented the Free Senior High School Program, popularly known as Free SHS in September 2017, six, nine months after I took office. From the initial annual enrollment of 422,940 in 2017, some 503,000 children entered senior high school 
this year. The highest ever enrollment of children into senior high school in a single year in our history. With 5.10 million children having so far benefited from this SHS policy since it was instituted in September 2017. The considerable budgetary allocations within the period, totaling some 12.8 billion CDs, amply demonstrate the sheer determination by the Okufuado government to ensure that education becomes a catalyst around which the future transformation of our nation will revolve. I'm particularly proud of how in the midst of the COVID-19 pandemic and other dire economic constraints, we've been able to sustain the free senior high school program and advance it even further with the addition of TVET and STEM TV. On Subscribe on our YouTube channel, system. click on the notification Again, bell so you don't miss out on any video we post. Mighty K Online, Mighty K TV, it is possible. And singled out for praise, the leadership role of my excellent and indefatigable Vice President, <laughs> Dr. Mohamedou Baumia. The man all of us, including even his enemies in the MDC, called Dr. Digitalization. Through the, his sterling efforts, transparency, efficiency, and accountability in the public sector have improved significantly. Under my direction, government took a decision to align the digitalization agenda to education improvement initiatives from pre-treasury all the way to the tertiary level, which is the reason for today's function. Government is determined to derive the optimum benefits in the twin areas of education and digitalization. I dare say that the investment and commensurate commitment towards education enhancement over the last seven years is unmatched by any government since the inception of our Fourth Republic some 31 years ago. These are seen in the areas of policy, infrastructure, equipment and retooling, furniture, scholarship, stationary provision, and enhancement of teacher welfare. One of the things that the COVID-19 pandemic succeeded in doing to us was to expose our vulnerability in so many areas of our lives, including the education sector. But it also created for us opportunities for innovation. It taught us to think, to find new ways to solve our problems. One of such was an opportunity to leverage on the digitalization option it presented to us. Indeed, the pandemic, the pandemic gave us a rare opportunity to accelerate the adoption of digital technology and shielded productivity. You will realize that as a forward-looking government, we seized the opportunity led by the Vice President to close the gaps that were existing in our digitalization space, and most importantly, ensure that the gains from digitalization policies are broadly shared in an inclusive manner. Based on this, government instituted a number of measures to ensure that education delivery was not hampered in any way. Students and teachers wore no nose marks or face shields and online or technology-aided distance education became popularized. The Ministry of Education spearheaded the distribution of some 200,000 laptops to teachers in pre tertiary institutions nationwide to enable them to derive maximum use of the computers. 
government trained beneficiary teachers on usage and utilization of applications embedded in the computers to facilitate the preparation of lesson notes and research, among other uses. This meant that the use of chalk and its associated health risks to both students and teachers were eliminated, thereby making our education delivery environmentally sustainable, as enshrined in the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals 3, 4, 8, and 11, as well as the tenets of the UN Climate Change Conferences of COPs 21 and 27. In furtherance of our digitalization agenda in the education sector, government is proceeding with plans to distribute 1.3 million educational tablets to students in senior high school. That is one student per tablet under the Ghana Smart Schools project. The tablets are fitted with digital contents to aid research, teaching, and learning. At the tertiary level, government plans to provide at a discounted price tablets and laptops to students and lecturers to facilitate academic work. Though largely successful, government continues to seek innovative ways to boost further the free SHS policy. Government is convinced that the next phase of free SHS enhancement will be propelled by digitalization. This will allow a seamless online and offline teaching and learning experience. Indeed, the enhanced free SHS school will be environmentally friendly, boost academic performance, fitted with interactive displays, interactive learning, and increased productivity, which is what has given birth to the Ghana Smart Schools project. The project seeks to deepen the application of IT in teaching and learning at the second cycle level. It will ultimately enhance the performance of students and prepare them better for higher learning and the competitive careers in future. The other component of the Ghana Smart School project is the provision of modernized infrastructure. Government intends to build 100 smart schools across the country. The first 30 of these will be completed this year, and the remaining 70 expected to be completed in the next two years. And for the avoidance of doubt, it is planned that the 100 smart schools will be located in the following cities and towns in all eight, 16 regions. Eastern region, Kuforidia, Akropon, Chebi, and Abetifi. Mighty K Subscribe on our Achimota, YouTube channel. Achimdalo, Click on the notification Amasamai bell so you Matinda. don't miss out on any video we post. Mighty K Online. Mighty K TV. It is possible. Blanc East Region, Techiman and Nkuranza. North East Region, Nalerigo. Western North Region, Enchi. Central Region, Salpong and Kasua. Western Region, Takrade, Takwa, and Wasa Ekropo. Bono Region, Sunyane, Fiapre. The Shanti Region, Tepa, Jabeng, Mampo, and Kumase, Bantama. Upper East Region, Bogatanga, and Binduri. Upper West Region, Wa. Northern Region, Karaga, Tamale, and Yendi. And Savannah Region, Damago. These small school buildings will be fitted with solar panels as we seek to promote new and environmentally sustainable energy. In fact, these small schools will be off the national electricity grid. They will also have 
We will also have digitalized infrastructure to advance teaching and learning. The physical infrastructure takes cognizance of our unique climatic conditions and will create a condus conducive atmosphere for learning. The schools will represent a new urban landmark for urban and rural land use and planning. There will be modern, iconic facilities depicting the collective resolve of a people for transformative and futuristic education. Mighty K TV. Subscribe on our YouTube content. channel. Click on the notification bell so you don't miss out on any video we post. Mighty K Online. Mighty K TV. It is possible. It is in fulfillment of the Education for Sustainable Development Agenda a key element in the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development Goals Number 4, which prioritizes quality education, a key driver for the attainment of all 17 SDGs. It will provide the needed infrastructure to facilitate e-learning and digitalization to boost high school education in the country. Under a well-thought-out arrangement, each student will be provided with an electronic tablet on which our comprehensive teaching and learning Mighty management K TV. and Subscribe on our YouTube channel, click on the notification bell so you don't miss out on any video we in post. Mighty K Online, Mighty K TV, it is possible. where every Ghanaian child has access to a world-class education that unlocks his or her full potential. Let us embrace this opportunity to transform our schools into hubs of innovation and excellence. Let us work tirelessly to ensure that no child is left behind in the digital age. I want to thank the Ministry of Education, the Ghana Education Service, and the Center for Distance Learning and Open Schooling, which together have made this project a reality. The dedication of its members to the future of our nation is truly commendable. Let us continue to work together, knowing that the investments we make today will shape the destiny of generations to come. Accordingly, ladies and gentlemen, it is my singular honor and pleasure to declare the Ghana Smart Schools Project duly launched. It is possible. I thank you for your attention. Please put your hands together. Mr. President, your children Mighty invite K you to join TV. them to officially Subscribe on our YouTube channel, click on the notification bell so you don't miss out on any video we post. Mighty K Online, Mighty K TV, it is Mr. possible. Mr. President, if it pleases you, I'd like to invite you to stand in the middle as I invite the Minister for Education, the Vice President of our Republic, the Director General of the Ghana Education Service, and the Director General of the CTVET as the first party. A round of applause for them. And so it falls to your darling boy Edmund to officially present you with a knob to officially unveil and so we do this in three in two and in one behold the future of Ghana's education it is the launch of the Ghana Smart Schools 